Hello and welcome to yet another Outside Insights Our Citizen. Today we're going to be talking about the Polaris and the rework of the concept, uh, or a concept rework of the concept. Uh, it's just, uh, I don't know. And the other topic is going to be like bug fixing. And uh, I did this on stream yesterday, so I'm just going to play you the whole clip from stream. I know that this is low effort content, but also I started streaming and I'm doing it like almost every day and it's really hard to find time to make videos uh, that are basically re <laughs> reworks of the videos that I basically did on stream. So at some point I'm probably going to do a separate channel where I'm going to be posting uh, like stream clips and all that while we uh, take this channel up to higher level with like better content and all of that once I get more time to uh, do both because I like streaming I like interacting with you guys and I will be doing more of that and hopefully you guys like it and uh, yeah I implore you to join my streams and to talk to me and uh, we can just have fun we're currently doing like a well, not really a zero to hero, but uh, like, I don't know, we're just going through all the bugs in the game and uh, seeing what mechanic works and what does not after a year of the same fucking patch. So uh, it is a fun time and we're like the counter is completely crazy right now. But uh, yeah, uh, other than that, uh, I'm probably going to be streaming throughout the whole December and then at the end of the year, I'm going to summarize and see if that affected the channel in a positive way or in a negative way and how you guys like that or like if you don't like it, just tell me. So anyway, without further ado, let me roll the intro and let's talk about the Polaris rework of the concept of the concept of the rework of the of the pin inside the Polaris of like, why are we talking about that? But shit. We're talking about that, so <laughs> let me roll the intro and let's talk about it. Hello, my name is All right, so let's watch IC. Well, builds can break for a ton of reasons. It's not a point of pride. You don't that, say. You know, I start to rattle off a whole bunch of different things that break builds because my whole vocation is to create tools, to create pipelines, and to create processes that don't break builds, that are very, very dependent. But in a perfect world, that might be the case. But in the reality of things, it can be so... Uh, this guy is trying too hard on the camera. Honestly, my first impression. So many things. But in a perfect world, that might be the case. But in the reality of things, it can be so many things. There can be no a one is more hated than completely he who speaks the truth. I mean, yeah, destroys it. There's I guess. so many different types of errors. There can be a compilation error that fa fails the build. There can be build errors that have nothing to do with the actual game data itself. We're trying to move away from these kind of things, but having assets, single points of failures on certain assets. So a good example is like in our facial data, we use a thing called a DNA wrap deformer. And it, it literally just came up this last week that there was a uh, wrap deformer attachment checked in that didn't have an LOD. Any face that was attaching this would fatal the entire game. As soon as QA <laughs> got into it, every two seconds, they were having a fatal error, which means the entire build sort of shut down on them and they couldn't proceed with their testing. So this is... Okay, I guess this is going to be a, an apologetic video uh, from CAG, but, or something that, like, you need to understand that game development is hard. We know that. We know that. Music is also hard, but I'm paid for making music. When I'm paid for it, I'm not going to tell my clients that, um, uh, like, th that it's hard and I can't do it. I will do it the best that I can. Let's one continue. of the reasons that we put those asset validations and those things in place there is a lot of reason that build fail um and you know part of the tool's job is making sure that those yeah i guess the script is made by uh, marketing so what is a build the easiest way to understand a build is everybody's heard of code compiling before and that is there's there's raw code that is written and then it gets run through a compiler and then out comes a binary or an executable as people would understand it um, the same actually happens with our assets. So sometimes our assets come through and they'll be in an intermediate type format, and then those will be get sent uh, over to the build system to be compressed in such a way that it's actually a lot easier for us to deliver the build to uh, users and for the build to actually be able to run a lot quicker. In order to distribute a version of the game to all the developers so that we can continue producing the game, we 
create what we call a build every, well, many times a day. As work is completed, it gets submitted to our source control system, Perforce, which is basically a, a way of just holding all of the assets, all of the code, everything that goes into producing the game. This obviously is being- You know what? I never understood. Uh, do, re do people really like this? Always good to see Sean, plus the tools team. Nice episode. Like, people are really into the game development side of this game. Not into the game itself, as much they're into the game development side and hearing about how stuff is getting developed. And it's a great thing. Like, their marketing team is doing a great thing because they, they notice that people are just uh, excited about this. I'm not. I'm a gamer. I'm not. I understand this, sure. But I, I, like, what what else am I gonna comment on, on this? I'm not a game dev, so I can't say, "Oh, you're go you're doing uh, this uh, completely right, or you're doing this wrong," because I don't know. I can I can tell you from experience as a gamer that something is wrong, <laughs> and that's it done by hundreds of developers or in different studios across the world. So when a developer comes in in the morning, they need to be able to depend on the build for the day. And the first build of the day, they're going to expect that all the stuff that they checked in the night before is actually present in that build so that they can continue to iterate on the what they've The PTV racetrack, on. like, that fucking gets me. Like, I'm going to play... I never played tra Track Mania, but I would rather play that instead of racing in, in, in Star Citizen. Of course, we're going to do this on, on stream just so we can see how janky it is. But sure. ...to that build so that they can continue to iterate on what they've been working on. So a build failing is a big deal. It actually brings down the entirety of the company on that particular change list. So there's a whole bunch of ways that we actually protect the build <laughs> what the uh, against failures like this. <laughs> what? There's a whole bunch actually brings... What the fuck down was that? ...the entirety of the company on that particular change list. So there's a whole bunch of ways that we actually protect the build uh, against failures like this. We run the assets through something called asset validation. And what this is, is a pre-commit check. Um, you can also call it health checks for, uh, for the assets. So we run these through, what is this validation? It checks for all the common errors that we would uh, possibly but make. But this is happening currently in, very in Star Citizen. Because... This, is, this is like, they're, they're, they're saying like, like, this whole video and what they're saying in the pictures that, like, the, the, the video that, that, that's going in the background with them, like, with everything being bugged, I never saw this uh, uh, issue here, whatever that was on our corp, but this, I saw this a bunch of times, and it's still happening. ...to the data. And it's very important because uh, when you're developing in the editor, it can check what you're doing within that one level, but it can't look at a holistic approach. So the editor itself will produce various checks uh, to make sure that what's exported uh, is in good shape. But the asset validation... Is this is John Cruz's dad because they look alike and they have basically the same, same voice? Come to that, checking things that they cannot check at that time. And then if there's no errors, it allows them to commit it. If there is errors, it tells them exactly what to do about it. They go and fix it and then are able to commit again, and we should be safe on the build. So we had a tool in place uh, since since I got here uh, to CIG, actually, and it started as a very, very small little Python script. And over time, as as with any tool, it, it, it got a little more robust, but as it got robust, it also got very confusing to continue to build out. It's showing its age. Um, there's been a lack of structure to it, and it's been very difficult to maintain and to keep up to date. What? So what we wanted to do was make sure that not only was it just the tools team able to write asset validation, but also the rest of the teams. Oh, and what man. that required was a more robust framework. Um, it's sort of- I thought for a second there, honestly, I thought that they were gonna say, so we're switching to Unreal 5. So in five years from now, <laughs> we're gonna be running on Unreal Engine and yeah, Jesus Plug Christ. Plug-in kind of approach. Ooh, got, um, got me fucking scared for a second. And what that required was a more robust framework um, it's sort of a plug-in kind of approach. Um, so we moved it from Python over to C Sharp, and now we have much, much broader um, um, adoption for all the teams so that they can write their own levels of asset validation within the tool as well. So of course, a big win for the tools team here is that we don't need to create all these tests. Isn't C Sharp even older? Like C++ and C Sharp and all that, that's fucking old as shit, right? 
can allow the experts in the other teams to do it for us. Other teams among the company, as we've scaled up quite a bit comparatively to the older tools, can actually write asset validation in. Ricardo, like sometimes people complain about them being too young, and sometimes they complain, like people complain about them being too old. Like, make make your mind up, honestly. If they're going, like if they're doing a good job, I don't have a problem with them, like or their age or whatever. But. You 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 saw the counter like a uh, uh, fucking ten minutes ago, when we started uh, watching this video. Most of the game is just fucking broken. Inside of this framework, so this was a really important part of the new tool. Now it does everything that the old one already did, but now our scalability is so much broader. So as we continue to develop Star Citizen, we get ever more complicated systems and therefore ever more complicated assets, and in particular the dependencies between them get ever more convoluted. So it's very important oh, that we good? can okay. have a scalable system that allows contribution from everybody to help address the potential issues that this could uh, incur. So the exact same I way as a player right. might be excited for a feature coming from a feature team within CIG, we have developers excited for a tool that may be coming from the tools developer within CIG. It's very much the same paradigm. So when we bring up new asset validation, they appreciate having this because they need to know about those errors up front. They don't want to wait for the build to fail for some producer to come to their desk and go, why has this failed? Why has your asset not worked out? For players especially, this is going to matter for you because as you've been waiting for a PTU build or an EPTU build, these failed builds slow these things down. And if we can't review them, we can't QA internally, that means a release doesn't go out. So we're trying to nab it right at the very beginning. So that developer knowing that there is a problem before it hits the build, before it fails to the build, and before it delays a release for you guys. So the tools team is incredibly important as far as the developers, players, and builds go. And ho Okay, so if I wasn't watching this on stream and if I was just alone, I would skip through the whole section. And then I would just like watch watch it again uh, because uh, that is my fucking job, right? But from what I can hear here is that the new builds are going to be better. And we're going to have less and less bugs because of the C++ uh, or C Sharp, actually, uh, integration. So I guess we got to see. We got to see Sharp with our eyes. Anyway. Hopefully this means more builds will make it to players' hands. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, brief look into the tools team and one of our products, and hope you see you again in the verse. While much of C sharp is a is a like a note, C minor is a chord, KX, D minor is a chord. You cannot compare those. Star Citizen's continuing development is dedicated to creating gameplay systems like Cargo and Salvage, new locations like rivers, sand caves, and crash sites. Missions like the new prison escape, the Horizon platform stuff, the time trial races, and everything else that's heading our way in the upcoming Alpha 318. The folks that are focused on the making and iteration of tools. Uh, in 318 EPTU, there are a lot of fixes from one day to another, but they are using it now. I mean, it was like that in, before in all the EPTUs, in all uh, Evocatis. Maybe not this fast, but also I'm not sure. Tools to help the very. As I've said, we gotta see it uh, with our own eyes. Uh, we, we gotta uh, experience it, and we gotta see if this is working better. Like as an end consumer, I wanna see progress, even if that progress is just f fixing the fucking bugs. Even if that, but also I'm not complaining about the bugs, I'm complaining about the lack of progress and gameplay loops and all that. And then what we have in the game is broken. The very process of game creation itself are an essential element of the, of the game dev gumbo that we make here. And we're always thrilled when we can give them a few minutes to shine. But up next, the long-awaited, often rumored, Polaris concept model internal layout rework. Now, it's not a series of new concept images like those that were... So why are they showing us uh, the Polaris concept? IE just ended, so you can't even fucking buy it anymore. Um, maybe you can, but like, w what's the point? We're not going to get it anytime soon, so... Rework. Now, it's Let's not a series it, of new it. concept images like those that were created for the 600i we showcased a few weeks ago, 
But this is a down in Which the rough 3D Max model. IAE. Look at the reworked concept mesh to explore the new internal layout so potential pirates can begin plotting out their boarding actions. Enjoy. Boarding. Polaris is obviously a really, really old concept. It's been around for a very, very long time. It's one of the Five early ships years. that we did the exterior concept art for. The Polaris came out in, I think, 20. 17. Uh, lots of features have been added to the game since then that were not known about at that time or couldn't be planned for if they were known about. Yep. Like a lot of the older ships, the interior just didn't fit. It, we couldn't get the size, the scale, or the metrics for how we'd want it to appear to actually fit inside the frame that we had. We've really now locked in how we want the interior layout, what the impact of the exterior means, um, but it's still the same Polaris that everyone originally... So did they nerf it before even fucking working on it? ...door and, and, and fell in love with. It just means that now it's kind of fit for purpose, whereas with the initial concept... Six-year-old ship, my matrix layout, images, like yep. ...we needed it to be. All right. The exterior remains pretty much the same beyond it has got larger to accommodate some of the... Why are we still watching, like, looking at the same fucking images that we have already? Interior changes, the role is the same, the key visuals are the same. You may notice again some like panel line changes or turret updates. Did they give it a fucking look at the, the Polaris now versus then? It's almost indistinguishable uh, aside from that scale change, and the role remains identical to what it was before. Moving on the inside, however, we have a completely different story. Although there wasn't much seen for what the inside was going to look like. We had to remove a lot of that and just start again. We fit the entirety of the interior inside of it while taking into account the change in component sizes. Where we went from size zero all the way up to size 10. Um, whereas now we've got much more kind of, uh, distinct categorization of our components. We've now got a, a capital shield generator, a capital power plant, a capital cooler, all to support the actual size of the ship and the scale of it, especially for what its role is within the actual universe. Okay. So, talking layout, we don't have concept images for every single room within the, the ship. Fire mesh model, I can yeah. give you an estimation of what you can expect from it. So, you start no, with dude. The uh, also, uh, in my community channel, the link is down in the description. You can hop into it. It's the Discord channel. Uh, people keep on ca calling this guy Grumpy Wannabe. So, <laughs> Grumpy Wannabe, because I forgot his uh, his name. Uh, don't tell tell us what we're gonna what to expect. Tell us when. To expect it it's been fucking seven years now the five ship, no five years give you an estimation of what still you the same fucking it. so you start from the bridge which has been opened up a bit to give you a bit more space and visibility behind that we then have the escape pod section where there's wait the bridge didn't look like this in the original shots i don't know i i, I can't really see from from this side if you're actually going to get any more space or visibility we then have the escape pod section where there's escape pods for the crew to be able to quickly evacuate the ship moving behind that we then have the captain's quarters and office as well as the co's uh, office behind that again we then have the armory moving further back we have the crew bunk room and baths and showers all right so this looks nice the interior will look nice at some point when i don't know I guess released maybe, but it's the same fucking wire mesh that we saw with the um, Odyssey a year ago. So where is this ship? From that, we then have the wreck area. So it's it's where the food is. It's where the, the relaxation is for the actual crew. Oh, that's where the pool table is. Moving back further, we then come to. I'm so glad that we have fucking uninteractable pool tables there. Where the actual hangar of the Polaris is. And that's had a bit of a size increase, so it's very comfortable to fit things like a saber in it now. On the left and right hand side, on one. You can actually fit a saber now? That's cool. I like it. Before, the thing was that you can, like, put a. What's it called? A Gladius inside, and that's it. Be happy with it. But saber is a, a bit bigger ship, so that's nice. On the side, you have the medical facilities. On the other, you have the holding cells for any prisoners or wrongdoers that you might get hold of. 
And then moving back, you then have the entrance of where engineering is, which spans about two decks. A small section of it is at the rear, which houses some... This whole thing is not going to be interactable with, I'm pretty sure. The, the, the whole main section of the fucking ship. And the more standard components, then the lower deck of engineering holds the large capsule components for the Polaris. Sure. Moving back forward then from the rear, we then have the cargo hold. Moving forward from the cargo area, we then cargo have hold the Cargo hold was like small as fuck. It was like 64 SUs or something like that. It, it was not that big. So this looks like it grew a bit. Maybe. I don't know which has all of the torpedoes stored and an operation station if anyone needs to maintain Maybe it's gonna fit down there. Robert's ego. So the Polaris is concept complete. We're pretty happy. All right, let's see this. Bridge. They said that it's gonna be more spacious than it was, but it doesn't look like that here compared to the old pictures, honestly. It looks a bit more cramped up, although it's not, it's not uh, an issue. Uh, if it works, it works, and that's it. If you can see outside, if you can land, if you, if you can fly it, sure, great. Just give it some, like, immersion to look like a ship from Star Wars or Star Trek, whatever, and, and we're good. Uh, this whole room is whatever. It's an empty room with a bunch of ex escape pods, sure. This is the main elevator. The armory is close to the cockpit. Where's the, uh, the exit? Turret access. So the armor is just going to be close to the cockpit and the elevator. Okay, so it's it's on the other side of the elevator. That's cool. That's cool. Although this could be the armory, but whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, this is just a corridor. Captain's room. Turret access. CO. Okay, yeah. So you got a CO that's going to probably be flying the, the shuttle or whatever you're going, you're going to have. Turret access. Bathroom. I see that it has a bit more turrets than it had before, I think. I'm not going to redo that fucking should you buy the concept ship video, like, not for this ship. Bathroom, bunk room, okay, this is uh, done really nicely, we saw that uh, with the wire mesh. Small cargo elevator. That's new. Escape pods, cells. Cells are here, next to the hangar, so they can just escape and with the escape pods or take your fucking ship and fly away, okay. Honestly, they're so small that they could be just, like, here somewhere. In whatever this whole area is that is just not used at all. I would make the cells go there, but, okay. Medical... Oh, shit! It got some medical bay! Okay. So that's an improvement. With the updates to it internally, and hope you are as well. Uh, and now we are just at the point of scheduling when we can jump it into production wait this is the lower main cargo ramp okay so cargo room yeah the cargo room is a bit bigger torpedo room they gotta do the fucking torpedo gameplay like the because uh, you, you, apparently you, you're gonna have to have like a an engineer that's gonna be loading the torpedoes up and all that into the tubes so without him you will just fire the four torpedoes that you have and then it's that's it you're done cargo elevator engineering that's cool so yeah this is the the i mean yeah sure it, it looks maybe better than before but still when the polaris is concept complete we're pretty happy with the updates to it internally and hope you are as well dude it was concept complete fucking five years ago the polaris is concept complete we're pretty let me let me remind you you did a fucking video on that you did a whole fucking video with a polaris commercial i'm gonna play without music because they probably have some copyrighted music the idris the javelin and then they show the fucking polaris that just like the bringer of the fucking the pain. 2016. Fucking six years ago. Be happy with Let's the continue. updates to it internally and hope you are as well. Uh, and now we are just at the point of scheduling when we can jump it into production. It's naturally a, a lot. So when are you going to fucking schedule it? Can we be at that meeting, <laughs> please? So we can tell you to schedule like at least three uh, uh, capital ships or sub-capital ships that you owe us for fucking years now.
for example, the BMM. So you can schedule it, so you can put a fucking pin in it in like a month or so. Large ship, slightly larger than it was. Uh, so it's not All series be... was complete, not concept complete. It was complete a long time ago. But then they realized that the corridors are too fucking small for the NPCs to move through them. So they need, needed to make everything larger because they were changing the, the, the sizes that they had to have inside the ships. So uh, that's why it got delayed. But also, even if it didn't, what would you do with the fucking Halsey? Honestly, what would you do do with it? it? Like, go click on a thing, pop, like the, the, the fucking cargo just uh, pops on. You go sell it, get your fucking 2,000 AUAC that you got from, from like, what, what is it, like 3,000 um, SUs of cargo, and you're going to earn 2,000 or maybe 10,000 AUAC, and you're happy with it, like, whatever. Honestly, I would love to see the Halsey uh, released after the cargo uh, refactor. A quick endeavor, but we think it's going to be a, a pretty fruitful one by the end of it. The Wait. less production is naturally a, a large ship, slightly larger than it was. Okay. Uh, so it's not going to be a quick endeavor, but we think it's going to be a, a pretty fruitful one by the end of it. Great. The lessons that we've learned over the years from... So, again, soon trademark by, by CAG. The evolution of making ships and their interiors have all come into play when we've done the Polaris. Fucking great. And I can't wait for people to be able to see it. Sure. So, what did we learn this week? Well, we learned a bit about... Well, we learned that you, like, have nothing else to show us. Therefore, you're going to talk about the concept that you fucking showed us six years ago. And then... And then... Maybe you're going to schedule it just to put a fucking pin in it. Let me finish it off with this. So with that, what did we learn this week? Well, so what did we learn this week? So what did we learn about this week? So what did we learn this week? So what did we learn about this week? What? So what did we learn this week? So what did we learn this week? Well, so what did we learn this week? So what did we learn this week? So what did we learn this week? So what did we learn about this week? So what did we learn this week? So what did we learn this week? So what did we learn this week? So with that, what did we learn this week? Well, so what did we learn this week? So what did we learn about this week? So what did we learn this week? So what did we learn about this week? What? So what did we learn this week? So what did we learn this week? Well, so what did we learn this week? So what did we learn this week? So what did we learn this week? So what did we learn about this week? So yeah, that was made by Jack Reacher, and uh, you can subscribe to his channel. Let me just link it to you guys. He's a really good friend of mine. We've grown to be friends now. He's also a supporter, and I'm gonna uh, finish off with that. So this is his channel. You can subscribe to him. If you, if you like him, he just made that and he gave it to me because it was fucking funny. So with that said, thank you for watching. Thank you to all my patrons that are supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel, there's going to be a link down in the description of the video. Unfortunately, I do not have the patron list here on the streams because I just can't figure out how to make it. Uh, because it's just fucking weird. But uh, if you do not want to support me on Pat Patreon, but you want to support me, there is a uh, super chat. There is also super thank you and all that, whatever, on YouTube. But there's also merch that I have made. All the designs are mine. And uh, if you want to get something in return for supporting me, uh, this is the way to go. There is a bunch of new uh, uh, prints that I made. And, uh, for example, you have shorts, uh, which say uh, that those shorts are tier zero sweatpants, uh, sweatpants. And you have, like, I don't know... I've, I, I already forgot, like a loner t-shirt for a hoodie. So if you want to support me, you can do that. And thank you again for watching. And I think I'm going to stream again tomorrow. If not, uh, I'll see you when, when I see you. And that's it. Thank you again. And mwah, goodbye, good night, and uh, have fun. And don't forget to break a towel when you're traveling through space. Bye.